I certainly want to make sure that we talk about some of the therapies that are emerging to target LP little a specifically, you know, what is out there, how you use this information to inform patients or discuss with patients and how those conversations typically go. So, uh, there are a number of treatments in development. There is an antisense oligonucleotide. That's a, a single stranded DNA based therapy known as pelicarsin. The trial, which is known as LPA horizon. I'm the study chair for the trial has been going on for a number of years. It's by far the farthest along therapy. In phase two, it lowered lipoprotein A by 80%. And we would expect in the phase three trial that now ongoing, it's 8,300 patients. Uh, it's global. Uh, we would expect about an 80% reduction. We will find out whether major adverse cardiovascular events are reduced by pelicarsin within the next couple of years. Then there are these four small interfering RNAs and the one that's furthest along is Olpasserin, but there's also Zerlacerin, there is Lepodiserin, uh, and if you add then add pelicarsin, that makes the four nucleic acid based therapies that are out there. Would you be able to give just a very short explanation on how these therapies kind of work at a cellular level? I can. Uh, pelicarsin, which is the anti nucleotide, single stranded DNA, it basically gets into the hepatocyte and it is designed to disrupt messenger RNA for apolipoprotein A. If you don't make apolipoprotein A, you can't assemble lipoprotein A particle. The small interfering RNAs, olpasserin, zerlacerin, and lepodiserin, they're double-stranded RNA. They tend to have a, a longer duration of action because what happens is uh, they get into the hepatocytes. And by the way, all of these nucleic acid-based therapies are conjugated with a, a kind of a sugar called N-acetylgalactosamine or Galnac. Galnac has a receptor in the hepatocytes. So when you give it subcutaneously, it gets into the serum, but it doesn't stay very long because it gets picked up by the hepatocytes due to the active transport from the Galnac moiety. But the short, the small interfering RNAs, they form what's known as a risk complex, an RNA induced silencing complex. And in that complex, the messenger RNA is trapped and degraded. And the small interfering RNA then persists in the risk complex and goes on to degrade more at messenger RNA as it's made. Uh, the phase one trial of the longest duration drug was lepodiserin I presented uh, last year and a 608 milligram dose reduced LPA levels to undetectable for 9.4 months. And at 337 days, almost a complete, e e almost a year, levels were still 94% below baseline. But all of these drugs are given anywhere from every 12 to 24 weeks. There is another therapy in development, uh, and that is a CRISPR-based therapy. And for those of you that don't know about CRISPR, it's a gene editing technology that basically can knock out the APOA gene and it's one and done. So people that are at high risk have the potential to be treated with something which will permanently alter the gene responsible for apolipoprotein A and prevent its formation. This is a little bit further in the future, but it's coming. With these therapies that you've mentioned too, just something that has interested me with the mechanism is the targeting of APOA. Does that affect other values within the lipid panel? Well, it's very interesting. 
because all of the nucleic acid-based therapies lower both LDL and ApoB. Now, the mechanism here is very complicated because there is LDL cholesterol in the lipoprotein A particle. So if you lower lipoprotein A, you will lower LDL cholesterol in the way that it is currently measured. Whether that will contribute to the benefits or not, we don't know. But both LDL and ApoB go down in the range of, you know, 20, sometimes even as much as 30%. And so that's not a trivial reduction in those other lipoproteins, but the effect that it has is uncertain. There's also a decrease in, in oxidized phospholipids, which are believed to be part of the pathophysiology of the disorder. So, you know, we're going to find out a lot more because when we complete the trials, we'll do secondary analyses and try to understand the mediators of benefit. And I'm hoping that we do see benefit. Wow, thank you so much for running through the mechanisms of action there. How do you go about speaking with patients at this stage about what is available and what is coming up, so to speak, for targeting LP little a? Well, if the first of the trials are successful, we will do everything we can to get this in front of the FDA for an accelerated approval, for an, a rapid approval. And that help is coming. So if we can just keep you safe, for the next couple of years, we may well have important options available. Thank you so much. And something that we love to try to emphasize on Core AM too, because we find that it helps uh, integrate concepts is if you've had any memorable patient encounters or experiences where LP little a has truly changed their management, their perspective on their own atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk. I'm sure there are many to choose from, but just if any generally come to mind. I have families where uh, both parents are afflicted and have levels in the range of three or 400 nanomoles per liter who have children, teenage children, who have levels that are similarly high. And what has happened in those families is that everything that can be done is being done for the children. Because if we can start at a young age and really reduce their other potential risk factors, then they will have a future that is very different. Some of them I've been taken care of since they were adolescents. Now they're college aid. Um, and I'm really, really hopeful for them. And that's, that's a story that I think resonates.